In this video, we will be building this bridge containing the solar panels, the battery, and the logic chips to automate at least the vertical tracking, because on the moon, vertical tracking is enough. So let's get right into it. Hi everybody, I'm Gramforks and I'm your host for today and we will be, as said, build the aforementioned bridge. So first thing, we, what we need to do is the build the bridge. And to build it, I have here 10 steel sheets and 10 uh, steel frames. So we're building, gonna build first 10 steel frames, which will be consisting of the bridge. And the purpose behind the bridge, this is a design that I've been using in my Let's Plays for the most of the time. And that's mainly because the bridge has two functions actually even three if you count it first one is to be an extruded point upwards that's high up so that my solar panels have unobstructed line of sight then it is also providing a roofing above my machines so I can put lights on top of it so even that during the night I'm not dependent on my own light source and the third one is that it will be housing the batteries, which will hold also, which have the LEDs, you know, the, the, um, the LED lights, which can be seen from quite far. So also it serves like a beacon of sort. So that's why I'm actually going with this design and I have been using it forever and it's really, really been successful for me. So that's a tip for you if you're interested in or thinking about it, because your base can be seen from far, but these lights on top of the batteries can be seen from very, very far out, even during the night. So that's uh, that's my reasoning why I'm going with it and I'm sticking to it. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna actually expand this because I expand that the solar panels will be going in length. And I have a very specific reason. I'm gonna use my basic solar panels until I get more and I, until I can produce. Uh, the solar panel, basic solar panels are here gonna be just to provide that little boost of power and also as a placeholders for either the solar panel later on or a battery. So yeah, that's why I'm actually using, I mean, you could argue that these solar panels are not great, but they still have their use, so to say. And I have dismounted the previous solar panels that we have in, had in the playthrough, but I have left the connection point, so they will be connecting to my airlock, uh, you know, APU. So, yeah. All right. So let's go here. I'm going to leave one place here for the logic chips mainly. And here, as you can tell, I will be able to connect my, uh, I will be able to connect my airlock and stuff. So... Yeah, uh, let me just quickly check. All right, so this is the battery and uh, that is gonna be moved upwards. We had it until here and this the whole point was that it just survives temporarily. But all in all, it should be placed upwards. There we go. I'm gonna place it here. I'm leaving deliberately one space available and that space will be for the solar panel logic. So that's kind of important. And I'm also making sure that on the left hand side will be all the inputs while on the right hand side will be all the outputs from the battery. So there we go. Let's place it like this. Am I happy? Yes. Okay, good. So that thing being said, here's the battery and now we should be placing the solar panel. As said, here I'm mainly placing the solar panels that will be uh, rotated this way and it will only provide a modicum amount of power but its main purpose is to be a placeholder because I plan to put more batteries but I don't have the resources for them yet. So here there will be batteries and here we're going to be placing solar panels really important that we orient the power port towards the sunrise uh, it will be mainly important for the tr solar tracking and although this is not the easiest setup or the best setup but it works for me so uh, we are adding the glass sheets that will make the solar panels work and now we want to be using cable coil heavy and I'm using here the heavy cable coil mainly because I want to uh, connect uh, and there will be some high voltages the battery usually when it takes it ta can take as much power as it wants to so really a reason to use the heavy cable coil here 
Once you get uh, like I think eight or nine solar panels put on the same time, you are going over the limit of what the regular cable can handle. So that's the reason why I'm going with the armored, you know, heavy cable and then you don't need to think about it basically. All right, uh, putting the T's, now let's connect them. This will ensure that the power can be connected from all sides. Come on, there we go. All right, oops. Uh, I, one downside of working with the bridge, you have to use a lot of jetpack. Later on, I put some floor tiling around it so that you can walk around and that will be coming pretty soon. But uh, for the time being, I'm just rolling with it as is. I have bigger concerns than uh, beautification at this moment. Right, so as you can tell, immediately when I hooked it up, the battery started to charge because the solar panels are providing some power. And that's great. So now what I want to see is which sides are they turning towards. So uh, what I want to do, I want to place the solar sensor. Uh, and that's the light sensor that's going to be placed on this side. So it has to be facing towards the sun, like the power ports. Okay, so if we place it roughly here-ish, then I will be able to basically get the data from it and understand. Okay, so the solar angle will be on that side. And now let's check if I turn the solar panel, I need the wrench, right? Yes, uh, so 100 degrees is towards that side. And okay, sun is above. All right, so I guess I have to turn the solar panel on the opposite side. Oh, come on, jet back. All right, so I have to turn the solar panel to this side. So it has to be horizontal 90, I'm guessing. So let's turn them horizontal 90. This is very basic, you know, solar tracking. Uh, but for the moon, given that the angle, solar angle is almost is like zero, so it's really, really almost optimal. So you don't need to do dual axis uh, if you're on the moon. Uh, for Mars, there are some benefits and for other planets, there are more benefits. But for the moon, really one axis solar tracking, which is just vertical, is more than sufficient. All right. With that thing being said, now we're going to be taking a look at the logic required to do so. But uh, also, I need to probably connect the battery output. Yes, I need the cable coil that will be connecting to the data ports. So might as well get to it. OK, I'm going to take the regular cable here. There we go. Just the power port. The trick, the battery is, can be tricky. Uh, later on, I will want to connect this as well with the uh, with the um, the data. And it doesn't need, but the power supply going to the other various PSUs should be connected with the heavy wire rather than anything else. So that's one thing for me to consider. But right now, I'm just going to connect them as is and be sure not to th be providing higher amount of voltage than needed. Otherwise, we might get uh, broken wires and uh, over, you know, yeah, events. So there we go. Come on. The one trick that I'm when you're, when you're jumping around Mars, it's kind of good because Mars has a little bit of gravity. Moon has less gravity than Mars, which makes it a little bit more complicated when it comes to, you know, well, everything. Uh, but uh, that's a problem that we're going to be tackling later. So right now, as you can see, I'm connecting directly up power output and here. So, yeah, ideally the data is not provided there. Hopefully we won't fry any chips, but uh, let's see if that works. OK, so let's put the solar uh wait hold on uh you we can put away let's take in the coal and we might as well connect the coal because that will give us the initial boost because the sun is almost setting and i haven't yet set up the tracking so if i place it here then we will be able to run a full power cord upwards so one thing that you have to be really careful not to connect is the input and the output because if you connect the two there's gonna be broken wires and fireworks yeah so okay let's go with this 
it's really important that I connect the generator because until I get my you know solar tracking working properly the only thing that will fully you know power the power the solar panels will be the generator and as you can tell the currently the battery is still struggling to charge mainly because they'll well there's no tracking and there's no sun so yeah so let me just quickly connect those so basically on the next day we will have our solar tracking fully ready and being able to you know charge and connect properly good Okay, that being said, now we should probably get down and make sh sh shove in a lump of coal and make sure that the battery gets powered, at least to a somewhat degree. Okay, coal generator is running and as you can tell immediately that light stopped blinking, which means battery is getting charged. Good. Now onwards to the solar tracking solution. That one is actually quite simplistic and really not, a, not big of a deal. Uh, and especially since the update in 2022, that has become very, very simple. So uh, first off, I want to print more cable coil because I don't have enough. So I'm going to be printing a lot of cable coil. Let's just put it to print and I'll need around 20-ish. Although technically I won't need nearly as much, but still. I want to make sure that I have printed everything that I need and that I don't go up and down constantly. So, all right, cranking them out. Electronics printer is, by the way, is like two, three times faster than the than the auto lathe in terms of pr printing the cable coil. Both can print, but the electronic printer is much faster. So, ultimately, if you need cable coil, you can use your auto lathe, but whenever you can switch over all right that being said let's go up and now as you can tell the generator was able to charge the battery up to level two so now what we want to do is i want to be connecting the regular wire upwards so i'm going to be placing the logic chips here and let me just first take the wires Okay, and let's connect it. Come on, I need it yellow wire. Yellow, there we go, one more. Okay, turn it this side. So you will be providing input to the logic reader. The logic reader will be reading the vertical solar angle from the light sensor. So logic reader, and I like to connect it directly because then the solar, uh, solar sensor is the only input that the logic reader can read and then we're going to be placing batch writer so not the logic writer because logic writer will write on a single solar panel the difference is that the batch writer writes on the entire class of solar panels so meaning you need only one writer for all the solar panels that you have all right let's connect these all right i need to splice this one in all right there we go perfect and i need to connect the input and output and i think i'm gonna need to connect also the power for the batch writer i i think now let's see uh what do i need uh have i connected almost everything i think so okay let's just go inside quickly I wanted to exchange my battery cell because it was already complaining and I want to be taking my labeler because labeler is useful for renaming your components and in case this case logic chips I want to rename them just to make sure that they're properly named so let's go upwards I always like to say I mean it will be once again logic reader but it will say what it is reading so that I know what what I have so logic reader and uh, solar angle and it's reading solar angle vertical good all right so that one batch writer solar angle vertical okay good there we go so now what do we need to we let's put this away and let's now go into the reading so we take the screwdriver we'll turn it on and we should cycle it to the daylight sensor 
and then it should be reading, it's currently reading none, it should be reading solar angle vertical. Okay, so after some fiddling, I realized that I actually need to read the, not the prefab hash, but solar angle vertical. There we go. And now we're reading it. So now is everything correct? I basically, this flashing error confused me. I forgot that I need to read the, which variable I'm reading from the sensor. So uh, here where input is the logic reader and it will be writing to all not batch writer, not area power control, but to all solar panel dual. Good. And you will be writing the vertical, I guess. All right. So everything you read, you will post there. So let's see if when once we turn this on, vertical is 59. So it's decreasing. And that makes sense because sun will soon rise on the horizon. And as you can tell, the solar panels are slightly tilting downwards to adjust their angle. So for us, there's now nothing more left to do except then wait for the sunrise and see if we have nailed it. looks beautiful I'm by the way I'm thinking I might actually prepare for even more solar panels I'm just gonna be placing the cable here because sooner rather than later I want to construct more solar panels because they are they take a lot of <laughs> they generate a lot of power and I need power once I have power stored in the battery. So I'm even thinking if I have enough materials, I might actually print one more solar panel. So let me just quickly check and I'm going to prepare the cabling. While we wait for the sunrise, there's nothing better to do at the moment rather than prepare the cabling for another solar panel. So let me see. Okay, we place you like that. All right, and then the cables. So once we just plump in the solar panel, it should be able to work directly. Because the beauty of the batch writer is that to write so on the entire class of solar panels, meaning that we will be able to get everything there. So let's see, kit solar panel. Do we have materials? We have. Okay, then I might as well print one. We have, I guess, for more, but I'm thinking probably gonna go with just one more. For the time being, three solar panels should be able to recharge the battery enough uh, so that we have we don't have to worry about power anymore. At least until we get more complex machines like atmospherics, filtration, whatnot. But currently our consumption is not that bad. Let me see if I can print one more battery. No, we are missing gold. Okay, then we just leave it as is and we're going to be building another solar panel third one here just stick it in okay there we go then we need to make sure yeah and it's tilting downwards and I need to just change the angle on it so where is my wrench or as the Brits would say spanner yeah all right so let me see here's my wrench come on not the yeah, not the screwdriver, the, that one. So this should be tilted 90 degrees. Okay, good. So now all there is left to do is to sit and admire the view. Let's see, will the sun rise soon enough? Okay. Any moment now? All right, and if, uh, yeah, there we go, sunrise, beautiful. All right, the sun is rising, and as you can tell, well, we are gonna get enough power and our battery will be charged. So, hope you liked today's episode. Hit like if you have enjoyed it and has been helpful to you, and I will be seeing you in the next video. Also check out my Mars Guide, top right corner.